Hello, welcome to this video. This is the battery management system, aka the BMS, out of the Nissan Leaf battery pack. Um, if you hear a noise in the background, that is the uh, washing machine is on the spin cycle, so <laughs> eventually it'll stop. But I've gone ahead and taken the screws out of it, out of it, and so we can pop the cover off of it pretty easily. It's um, got tons of space in it because they got to clear these big caps, which is nice. So for very easy to modify. Luckily it's not potted um, so you can actually get in there and it is conformally coated but it's not too bad. It looks like it'll scrape off really well. And uh, I guess what I could do is just go over like uh, do a basic overview of what I think everything is in it. Uh, I looked up some of the part numbers so I have a pretty decent idea of what's going on. I'm going to move this let's move this that gets us up closer and then if I just get it to focus there you go really you're gonna unfocus because okay I use my cell phone to do this so it's not not the greatest but anyways we've got uh, these are the low voltage connectors over here on the side so this guy and this guy this is I believe all the can communications can come through here and then uh, power and contactors and uh, heater, all the other control signals come through, go through this guy. So first thing you notice is there's a lot of parts that are actually not populated on here, and I think I know what's going on. I think they've offloaded some of the um, control from this board to the uh, ECM in the vehicle in the Nissan Leaf. Um, these two switches here, or well, here, let's, uh, so we just got a common mode choke coming in here. But power come in, uh, all of this through here is ESD and transient voltage suppression, um, and filter, and just little low pass filters. You can see some caps and resistors to low pass everything, um, for signals coming in and out of the board. Uh, I got some capacitors here for the power supply. This is actually a switch. Uh, this is the 5 volt linear regulator for it that runs the uh, microcontroller. Um, I'm guessing that these two which are not populated are the contactor switches, uh, low side switches for um, the, I guess the high side and the low side contactor out in the battery pack. And it looks like those are no longer needed. It looks like they just take the signal and spit it out the connector. And then the uh, uh, ECM is actually determining whether or not those uh, contactors close or not, but it looks like it used to be controlled by this board at some point in time. And then over here is another power supply, but it is not being used. Uh, it's not populated. There's a whole section on the other uh, side that's completely not populated. And I'm not quite sure what that actually did, but we can make a few guesses. Here's a microcontroller. Uh, it's got a few little regulators around it, so it doesn't run at 5 volts, it's just being uh, regulated down. I didn't check these are adjustables. And um, probably either 3.3 or 2.5 volts or both. Some micros require two core voltages. I've got a 5 megahertz clock uh, crystal oscillator. And so this is obviously running at some multiple of 5. And over here we've got uh, versioning information. Uh, so we've got pull-ups and then a bunch of uh, zero ohm jumpers with one not populated. And that one zero ohm jumper is probably telling it, not being populated, telling it that this board doesn't have these components installed. Uh, we do that work all the time where the, the way they stuff the board tells the microcontroller, the firmware and the micro, uh, what hardware it's actually got access to and everything. And we got a programming connector here. And we got some uh, Opto isolators that are not populated, but this one is, and it does look like this is the main transmit for all of the uh, balancing ICs. Hey, the spin cycle's done. <laughs> so we've got a signal coming out through the micro down through here, and then around over here goes through a transistor to the drive the uh, diode or the LED inside this uh, optical isolator, and then the output side just got some biasing and. Uh, its output actually goes to these two lines here, and then, I don't know if you can kind of see, this is only a two-layer board, so it's really easy to, to see the traces. They go down over here, 
and then they make it down to the balancer chips. They do 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 over here to this guy. So I'm pretty sure that this is the first chip that it talks to. IC number 33, since that's the direction at which it would have to go. So it goes from this guy and then underneath to the one on the bottom, and then this guy and then underneath, and then to this guy and underneath, you know. All the way across till we get to here. And then we hit another optical isolator coming out of uh, the chip on the bottom, and then its output goes over to here to this guy, to this chip. And that is so they can actually pull the, um, the uh, 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 what's it, the main disconnect fuse. It's actually located in the middle of the battery pack, and if they didn't do this, then you'd have a lot of current flowing through the little trace that connects the two together. And that would be really bad, so they optically isolate that, and we can use that to our advantage because I need to split my, this thing in half and then take some out, so I think, uh, I think we're going to be in good shape with that. And then, so the same thing, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Then we get over here. And we're again driving the uh, the LED side of this um, optocoupler, which then comes out and it runs a little transistor. It's probably doing some level translation. And then we have this little trace that goes all the way around back up here and then over back into the micro. So I'm guessing that uh, the, this is the transmit, this is the receive from the entire stack. And it's pumping a bunch of stuff serially over that connection and so we're going to have to hook that up to the scope, take a look at that and then uh, hopefully reverse engineer what the protocol is. So the, the main thing we need to do is be able to read the battery voltage of each cell from these guys and find out what command is necessary to turn on the balancers. And here are the balancers. These little, um, these are 1206 resistors. They are 430 ohms. So if you've got say 4.2 volts on your battery, fully charged, and you're trying to, uh, you know, balance it, top balancing it, uh, these guys would start turning on, and they only dissipate 10 milliamps. So it's not going to be a super fast uh, balancing, but, uh, you know, if you're plugged in overnight, you can balance out a, you know, takes a, a 10 milliamps. It takes a while, but you could, uh, you could remove an amp or so from a battery overnight. <clears throat> So those are doing its things, and uh, yeah, uh, what else is there? Um, hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, anyways, um, I guess I could show you the other side of the board, it's pretty similar. So here's the other side, it is, um, it is very similar. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of, this is the other half of the uh, balancers, and it's not focusing for some reason. Just thinking about it, no, I need enough of a change to make it re, there you go. No, it really doesn't like to focus on that. Huh. Oh wait, think about it, there you go, yeah, you can do it. You can see right here the um, they're all in little kind of isolated groups, but there is a trace that comes from over here that resistor on the other side and it runs across to the next group, and then another resistor comes across to the next group, and so on and so forth. So that's how they're doing the communications between the different uh, sections, and then this line right here is telling you that that's the line that where the um, optical isolator is on the other side that breaks the uh, middle of the pack. Um, oh, this is the section right here that is completely not populated, and it looks like, just from the pinout, that it takes another one of these chips, so it was doing some kind of low voltage sensing at some point. Maybe they had a current shunt or something instead of a, a hall effect current sensor, and they were reading it with another one of these chips, but I'm not sure what that's actually doing. Um, then, oh, and then this whole section up here is, um, you see there's a bunch of capacitors. These are actually the uh, high voltage sense circuit is right here. And that, you can see the two lines coming in here. Uh, wait, I lost it. Yeah, it goes in through here and then the other one goes across here. 
But this is the high voltage sense circuit. Uh, that's what uh, measures the entire pack. And then they filtered it with, um, they've got a bunch of, oops, other way here, 400 volt capacitors, but they're all in series. You can see that they're all connected in series. So they get, so this is forming, so they got their bulk filter and then they have the little fine filter here. These are for the higher frequency noise. And that's what they're using to sense the uh, pack voltage, the whole stack voltage, I guess. And, uh, yeah, other than this, I'm not sure what that was doing. But it is not populated, so don't have to really worry about that. And then, oh, this is all the, um, this is the CAN interface here. Um, you can see the, uh, there's two CAN buses on here. So these are the, your uh, plus and minus lines coming in through here. And then they hit this as all uh, ESD protection, transient voltage protection. These are definitely the transient voltage protection because you can see the uh, line comes into one, one pin here, right? It goes into the other one that goes underneath. And the other side, uh, these would just be back-to-back uh, -back diodes. And one's connected to ground, the other one's connected to VCC, ground, VCC, so on and so forth all the way across here. And then like, a couple hundred ohm resistors in series with them to get rid of the ringing, any kind of ringing that would be on them. And then they come over here, these vias, and if we flip that over, that group of vias goes right into the micro. So that's a CAN interface right there. There's two CAN buses on this, one that goes, uh, talks to uh, a certain port on the ODB2, specifically for just the battery section, and then the other one goes back to the uh, uh, rest of the vehicle bus, the regular ODB. ODD, ODB2 port to talk to everything else in the uh, ECM. But yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it. There's uh, it's not that much going on. So my plan is to solder a couple wires onto this guy and solder a couple wires onto the output of this guy, and then I can see what the transmit and receive looks like real time. And snake them out the back of the plastic uh, backing and stick it back in the uh, battery. And then we will uh, run it and see if I can't figure out what uh, what it needs to do to read them. And then I will be replacing... Uh, there's enough room in here that I think I'll just stick one of my own microcontrollers in here and just kind of, you know, glue it or, you know, tape it in here. So that I can talk to it and get all the information I need out of it without having to go through their stuff. Because their micro is specifically trying to balance for, uh, you know, 96 cells, and I don't have, I'm not going to be using 96 cells, so that's going to cause problems. Um, if you're wondering about the beeping in the background, it's one of my UPSs, the uh, battery has died in it, and I haven't replaced it yet, so it's just beeping away to tell me that. And uh, if you can hear that. Um, but yeah, we're going to uh, go ahead and solder some wires on there, break those out, and then I guess I can drag my scope out to the garage, and then I can see what the communication is going on across those lines. And since I'm on the CAN bus already, I'll be able to read uh, that and make good correlations. The only thing I don't, that I need, don't know is if it will attempt to turn on the balancing resistors because I am not charging the pack, and I'm wondering if I need to send it a signal to tell it, hey, yeah, I'm charging, or if it's smart enough to notice, if I start pumping some current into it, will it start charging? Because my battery pack is low, well, not really low. It says it's got six bars on it, so out of the, it was ten when I first, when I first originally got it, but it's been sitting for a while, so I'm, I'm not sure if I can just start putting current into it, if that would make it start automatically balancing or if the battery charger needs to t talk to this board to tell it, hey, yeah, I'm going to go into like a low current mode so you can turn on your all your uh, balancing resistors. So not quite sure, but uh, we will uh, have to investigate that and see what's going on with that. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching.